Hello there, and welcome back. Today we're going to introduce a numerical scheme that can numerically solve multivariable optimization problems that do not have any constraints. So to get a general grasp of what the gradient descent method is actually doing, it's very, very useful to understand sort of what the newton raphson method does and how it does it. So let's just give a brief um, glance at the newton raphson method just in case you have forgotten. So recall the one-dimensional newton raphson method is given by the iteration scheme xk plus 1 is equal to xk minus fxk divided by fxk prime, right? And keep in mind, this is used for finding the zeros, but we can actually shift this around to optimize a function via the following. xk plus 1 is equal to xk minus f prime of xk divided by f double prime of xk. And in both of these schemes, x0 is defined to be equal to our initial guess, right? So as long as um, your initial guess is not too far uh, from the optimal value that we're trying to get, then this iteration should converge really rapidly. And for both of these methods, xk is belonging to one-dimensional vector space, okay? Um, now, the gradient descent method actually has a very similar structure. I'm not gonna go through the proof of it here, but maybe you can sort of think about this geometrically of how this comes about. So the gradient descent method is given by the following iteration method. So xk plus one is equal to xk minus h times the gradient of f evaluated at fk, all right? So what exactly is going on here? So xk um, is gonna belong to n-dimensional vector space, and h is going to be a scalar, like a number, like something usually close to zero, um, typically close to zero, um, similar to the derivative approximation, for example, like forward, backward, or central difference. Now, there is a requirement for the gradient descent method to converge. So let's just um, discuss that very quick. So requirement. So f must be a convex function. Now, there is one theorem that we have discussed before, and that theorem goes as follows. If the Hessian of a multivariable function is positive semi-definite. And what exactly do I mean by a positive semi-definite matrix? Because remember, the Hessian of a multivariable function is a matrix, right? Um, so we say that the matrix is positive semi-definite, provided that all of the eigenvalues of that matrix are non-negative. So if we can show that the Hessian of a multivariable function is positive semi-definite, then we have evidence to believe that F, or evidence to show that F is a convex function. So if we can show that the Hessian of our function is positive semi-definite, then we can be sure that the gradient descent method will converge to our solution. So that's actually very nice. So as a guidance example, um, let's consider the following function. So fxy is equal to x squared plus 2y squared minus 2xy plus 2x. All right. So if this is our function, let's calculate the first and second order partial rows to construct our Hessian just to see if it is positive semi-definite. So the first partial row with respect to x is going to be equal to 2x minus 2y plus 2. And hence the second order partial row with respect to x is just going to be equal to 2. The first partial row with respect to y is going to be equal to 4y minus 2x. And the second partial derivative with respect to y is just going to be equal to 4. And lastly, the partial, mixed partial derivative with respect to xy, and also the mixed partial of yx of xy, are going to come out to just negative 2. Right? So 2, 4, and minus 2 on the off-diagonal entries is going to be our Hessian matrix. Our constants, which is very great, that means the eigenvalues are going to be the same at all points of our surface. So what does that mean? So the Hessian of f 
at any point x, y is going to be equal to, um, generally speaking, let's just write it down, so it's going to be f, x, x, f, x, y, f, y, x, and f, y, y. So via our numbers, we're going to have 2, minus 2, minus 2, and 4. And if you know how to find eigenvalues, this is where you would do so. And if you don't know how to find eigenvalues, maybe you can use MATLAB to approximate them or what have you. So you can find the eigenvalues analytically. Um, one can find that lambda 1 would be equal to 3 plus the square root of 5. And the second eigenvalue is going to be 3 minus the square root of 5, um, which is approximately equal to 5.2 and 0 0.8. So we don't really care about the values of these eigenvalues. The only thing we really care about is that the lambda values are both non-negative. In particular, they're both positive, right? So that means that f, or let's actually go through the full logical statement. So that means hf is a positive definite matrix. It's of course a positive, a semi-positive definite matrix because um, all of them are greater than or equal to zero, but in particular all of them are positive, so it's a positive definite matrix. Uh, positive definite matrix. So since it's a positive, uh, semi-positive definite matrix, um, that means we have that f is convex, which means we can use the gradient descent method to find the optimal solution. Now it's very important to keep in mind what we mean by convex from the optimization perspective. When a function is convex, that means it has a unique minimum value, okay? So the gradient descent method, and that's emphasis on that word descent, is used to find minimums or optimal minimum values of functions that are not constrained, right? So if you have a maximization problem and you want to use the gradient descent method, you have to take the um, mirror image or the negative of that function and turn it into a minimization problem instead, All right? So we have a convex function. Let's get into the gradient descent method and how it sort of goes. So the very first thing that we need to do is construct our initial condition. Um, since it's a convex function, it usually doesn't matter too much of what your initial condition is. Um, so without loss of generality, I'm just going to choose 0, 0 because it's just a very um, simple initial condition to work with. So the next thing that we need to keep in mind, because we're going to be using this formula a lot, is the gradient of the function x, y. And keep in mind that came out to 2x minus 2y plus 2 and minus 2x plus 4y for the y component. And let's choose our h to be constant, um, in particular to be 0 0.1. Let's find our next iteration of the gradient descent method. So x1, keep in mind, is going to be x0 minus h times the gradient of f evaluated at x0. So that means that x1, keep in mind these x's, x1, x2, x3, x4, x0 are all vectors. Um, so x0 was the vector 0, 0. h was 0 0.1, the scalar. Um, the gradient of f evaluated x0 is what? So we're plugging in 0 everywhere we see x and y there. So that's just going to give us the vector 2, 0. And once we work out that math, that's going to just give us negative 0 0.2 and 0. So that is our x1. All right, now let's do our x2. So x2, keep in mind, is going to be x1 minus h times the gradient of f evaluated at x1. So that means that x2 will be equal to negative 0 0.20 0 minus 0 0.1 times the gradient at that point. And you should be able to find that that's going to be equal to 1.6, 0 0.4. And once you work out that math, that's going to come out to approximately negative 0 0.36 and negative 0 0.04. Now we can continue this iteration onwards. And let's just write down a few iterations. So x3 is going to be equal to negative 0 0.36. You can try this on your own. Negative 0 0.04 minus 0 0.1. Plug that point into the gradient, and you're going to have approximately 1.36, 0 0.56, which is going to come out to approximately negative 0 0.50 and negative 0 0.10, rounded to two decimal places. So that's x3. And I'll just give you the next couple iterations. So x4, about negative 0 0.62, negative 0 0.16. And x5 is going to come out to approximately negative 0 0.72 and negative 0 0.22 after some math. 
So if you continue, can you continue this iteration, eventually most of your solutions will be about the same. In particular, if you do like all the way out to like x 1 million, you can find that that's going to be approximately equal to the vector negative 2 minus 1, which actually is our optimal solution. And you can use analytical methods to verify that. So once we have our um, numerical or approximation to the optimal solution, then fx star will be approximated to be equal to what? So we just plug that value into our uh, objective function. So negative 2 squared plus 2 times minus 1 squared minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 1 plus 2 times minus 2. And that's going to come out to 4 plus 2 minus 4 minus 4, which is equal to minus 2. That means minus 2 is the minimum value for which our function attains, and it attains it at the value minus 2 minus 1. The last thing I want to do before we say goodbye today is just discuss a couple alternatives um, to the gradient descent method that are actually used in practice, and maybe you can even investigate them or try to implement them on your own to sort of see the pros and cons of them compared to the basic gradient descent method. So the first um, alternative to the gradient descent method is known as the adaptive gradient descent method. And the only difference between uh, the GD and the adaptive GD methods is xk plus 1 is equal to xk minus hk times the gradient of f evaluated at xk. So the step size will change on each iteration of the gradient descent method. Usually what they do is they start off with a large um, h to start, and then they decrease it on each iteration, right? Because the gradient's always going to point towards um, the steepest descent. Um, so usually as you sort of go down that slope, um, the elevation sort of tends to um, get more horizontal. Um, so maybe you don't need to sort of step down as quickly um, as before, um, because you're sort of flattening out as you get towards the bottom. So that's why we usually make our HK smaller. Um, but there are several different methods on how to make that smaller, so I'm just going to call it HK for now, where the step size changes on each of them. Now, there is a big downside to both the GD and the adaptive GD methods, and that is you have to calculate the gradient of F up front, right? So what we can do is do what we do, you know, for the newton raphson method, and do a numerical uh, gradient descent method or even a numerical adaptive gradient descent method. And how is that going to sort of go about? So what is xk plus 1? Let's actually write this in vector form. So keep in mind we have x1, k plus 1, x2, k plus 1, all the way down to xn, k plus 1, is going to be equal to x1, k, x2, k, all the way down to x n k, because keep in mind, we're approximating the optimal value of x star, which has an x1, x2 down to x n components, right? And then we have our minus h, which could be representative of k. You could make h k equal to h for all values k if you want to. We'll just write it there. And then we have the gradient um, vector, which is going to be the partial derivative of f with respect to x1 of x k, partial derivative with respect to x2 at x k, all the way down to the partial derivative with respect to xn at xk, and that is your gradient vector. And what we're going to do for each of these first order partial derivatives is approximate them with a, for example, uh, numerical method. So a numerical scheme, such as such as the central difference method. Right, so let's actually um, list out a couple of them just in case you are curious. Um, so the partial derivative with respect to x1 at xk is going to be approximately equal to 1 divided by delta x1, right? So it's the stepping stone in the direction of x1 times 2, and then times f of x1 plus delta x1 x2 all the way down to xn minus f of x1 minus delta x1 x2 
all the way down to xn. So that's the central difference approximation for the partial first order partial derivative of f with respect to x1, um, where f is a multivariable function with n variables. Similarly, the partial derivative with respect to x2 of xk will be approximated by 1 divided by 2 delta x2 of f of x1, x2 plus delta x2, all the way down to xn, minus f of x1, x2 minus delta x2, all the way down to x. M. And you might be thinking, well, why am I using delta x1 and delta x2? Why am I not using like h? Well, we already have h and our stepping stone for our gradient descent method, and we don't necessarily have to make those h's equal to each other, either in um, the partial derivative of x1 or the partial derivative of x2. Now, yeah, you could make that h, that h, and that h2, but for the general methods, they all could be different, with pros and cons, of course. But those are some of the alternatives for the gradient descent method that are out there that you may want to investigate on your own. But for now, that's all. I hope you take care, and I'll see you in the next video.